Did you know that there is now increasing evidence that there is a connection between erratic blood sugar levels and mood? And this comes as no surprise to me because I've noticed that if I have a bad day of eating and I eat a lot of sugar, a lot of carbs, especially on an empty stomach, that it does affect my mood. And I actually had this last week when I, I did have a very bad day and I found myself in the middle of the afternoon eating a whole bag of chocolate uh, caramels on an empty stomach, which is literally the worst thing you can do. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. Um, and I woke up the next morning and I had a really low mood. And I, I, I knew why it was. I, I, I knew exactly why it was. So that day I, I didn't do that. I, I didn't have sugar. I ate much more healthily. And when I woke up the next morning, that, that low mood had gone and I, I felt back to my normal self. So it's really important that we look at our blood sugar levels and we try and keep them more steady through the day. And if you already have depression, for example, um, it's very possible that if, you, if your blood sugar levels are, are spiking up um, because of the way you're eating, it could make your symptoms worse. And even if you don't have depression, it could give you depressive symptoms. Blood sugar levels are very important anyway because um, it's a short hop from high blood sugar levels to pre-diabetes to diabetes. And the moment you get to pre-diabetes, you're at, you're at much higher risk for heart disease, strokes, heart attacks. So it, it, it's really not a good thing. And unfortunately, depending how we eat, every time we eat, there is a rise of your blood sugar glucose levels. And um, it's it's much healthier to keep these levels as steady as possible. So there are things that you can do that will, even without changing the way you, what you eat that much, there are things you could do. So I'm going to give you uh, a few strategies then that you can use and um, have less of a, of a blood glucose uh, curve when you eat. So first and foremost is uh, apple cider vinegar. Now this stuff is amazing. This one that I have here is organic, raw and unfiltered, just like I like it. And they are showing, uh, research is showing that this is really great for diabetics, for example, and it, it decreases insulin sensitivity. And what is really good to do is if you know you're going to be having a very heavy meal or a very carb heavy meal, or you're going out for a big meal, just before you eat, if you have a tablespoonful of apple cider vinegar in a bit of water, which I don't think tastes bad, that will flatten the curve, well not flatten, but it will hugely reduce um, your, your glucose curve when you eat. So that's a really good thing to do. And apple cider vinegar is incredibly helpful anyway so uh, you don't have to have high blood sugar to do that but it, it's also particularly good for diabetics uh, so that's an easy thing to do that can make a very big difference the other thing is if you're going to eat carbs and sugars is when you eat them now now first of all let let's just be clear about one thing Carbs are sugar, because when you eat carbs like bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, when you eat them, they are converted into sugar in the body. So it's sugar. So think of those things as sugar. Don't think, oh, I'm, I don't eat any, I, I don't eat any sugars. I, I'm cutting down on my sugars, and then you eat tons of bread and stuff. You know, you this is converted to sugar in the body, and that's and it will cause a huge um, glucose spike. So what can you do? Well, every meal should be accompanied with some protein, some healthy fat, and of course, vegetables. And what you want to do, and this is a simple thing to do, is make sure you've had a good few mouthfuls of your protein, your fat, and your vegetables before you have your first mouthful of your carb. 
And um, in fact, I mean, what would be great is if you ate all your vegetables, all your fat and protein, and then ate your carb. But at the very least, make sure that you have some of this in your stomach already before you start eating your carbs. And there is a reason that dessert comes at the end of a meal, because that is where it should be. If you're going to eat sweets and you're going to eat desserts, it's much better to have them at the end of a meal and um, you will get much less of a glucose curve if you do that. The one thing you should never do, which is of course, as I was describing what I did last week, you should never just eat sweets and cakes and pastries on their own, you know, like a tea time or, you know, we all get that, that afternoon slump and that's when people will reach, or the mid-morning slump where people will reach for the biscuits or whatever. And that is just going to give you an absolutely huge glucose spike. But if you eat a good breakfast or a good lunch and you eat your foods in the right order and you include the fats and you include the protein, then you probably aren't going to get that mid-afternoon slump. And you, you'll hopefully have eaten a, a good healthy meal and you won't be hungry. So, so that's the way to go. The other good thing to do is um, have a little walk after a meal, especially a heavy meal or a big meal. A little um, walk and a little bit of exercise is also going to help. And then lastly, I think the most difficult meal of the day to get right is breakfast because most people have a carby breakfast or a, just a downright sugary breakfast and most people have a sweet breakfast so you know think of toast think of cereal think of granola think of croissants think of pancakes all the stuff is sugar in the body so it's just sugar 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 and you are going to get an absolutely huge glucose spike so what do you do? Well, it's a mindset and you need to think of, of breakfast as a savoury meal. And the, of course, the perfect thing for breakfast is eggs because they're so versatile and eggs are the perfect protein. So you can, you know, if you're really hungry and you want a big breakfast, have a nice big uh, omelette with lots of vegetables in it, um, scrambled eggs with some smoked salmon. Smoked salmon is, is a wonderful thing to have. Um, you can put some herbs in there. Uh, uh, boiled eggs. Boiled eggs are great fried eggs, bacon, organic bacon, steak, if you want a steak or chicken. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be breakfasty. It can be any kind of food whatsoever. Um, now, um, you know, I'm trying to get my, my husband to eat. He has very sugary breakfast. He likes bagels. He likes granola. And honestly, trying to get him to reduce the sugar is an absolute nightmare. And I have been buying him organic bacon and he will eat it sometimes. But unfortunately, he doesn't like eggs and he doesn't want bacon every morning. So what do you do? Well, go to the health food store and uh, try and find some keto products. So I've been searching for healthy granolas, which is not easy, let me tell you. And I did find a couple. Now, I'm not saying you should use these ones. There, there are other ones. Um, but anything that says keto on it is probably going to be okay. Uh, what you do want to avoid, however, is anything that has got um, sunflower oil in it. You don't want any seed oils. You want things, you know, and, and fat is good. So, you know, because that's going to be filling and satisfying. So coconut oil is absolutely great. Olive oil, butter, ghee, that sort of thing. Um, but you don't want seed oils. So I would avoid anything with seed oils. But this one, for example, it's got coconut in it, it's got nuts, it's got seeds, it's, it's got coconut oil, and it's sweetened with uh, fibre, inulin, which is what I've just written about on my website. It's, um, it's from chicory root. And that is, it not only does not raise your blood sugar levels, it's, it's full of fibre and it's very good for you. This all co also contains a little bit of erythritol, which is um, a, a sugar alcohol um, and, and one of the healthier ones, which, which won't raise your blood sugar levels and um, is 
is very low in calorie. So that it's a good alternative to regular sugar if you're absolutely determined to go the, the granola route. So you may not, as I said, you may not want bacon every single day every single morning. You may not want an egg every single morning. So if you want a little bit of, of alternative, you must read the labels and go to the health food store and, and, and see what you can find. Um, try and avoid any granola that's got grains in it. So if it's got wheat in it, if it's got even oats in it, you want to try and avoid because an oat is a grain and it will give you a blood sugar spike. But if it's full of nuts and seeds, it's a little bit of protein, it's healthy fat. And the other trick that I always do is I, at the beginning of every week, I boil a whole bunch of eggs. And a boiled egg is a great thing. So if you're, if you're eating a meal that doesn't quite have enough protein in it and you want to keep that blood sugar level low, have just, you know, if, you, if you've got a granola and it hasn't got that much protein in, just have a boiled egg with it and that'll up the protein um, quota and it will reduce your blood sugar level. So I hope this is helpful and it, it gives you food for thought and and start seeing, being, being aware now of your moods and if they are linking to possibly what you're eating and now you know that there are ways you can improve that so it'll be good for your mood and it'll be very good for your overall health and also help hopefully prevent you from ever getting to the stage where you start to get high blood sugar levels and become pre-diabetic. And by the way, a lot of people who do become diabetic, they don't even know because the symptoms aren't always apparent. And I know a number of people who have found that they were pre-diabetic or diabetic through a random blood test for something else. So if you're eating a lot of carbs constantly and have been for years and you're eating a lot of sugars, then just be aware that you may have high blood sugar levels and it may be worth getting it checked out.